Welcome, this is Team Modi, a special series in which we're looking at the work done by some of the key ministers in the Modi government. And our basic intention is to try and see what was it that they wanted to do when they took over as minister, how much of that had they been able to do, what is the unfinished agenda, and what are the challenges in finishing that unfinished agenda. Mr. Prabhu, Suresh Prabhu, Railway Minister, of course, uh, it's, it's fantastic to have you with us. Railway is one of the most important, one of the key ministries that we have, one of the largest uh, employers as well. I just wanted to ask you, when you took over as Railways Minister, when you looked at it, I just want to get to the big picture first before yeah, yeah. the fine print. What was it that you said, here are the five things that I really need to do before I you know, end my tenure? Here are the five or six things that I need to do. Yeah. You know, this is a very good question. Actually, many times we talk about reform. And I've dealt with uh, other sectors like power, water, even chemical fertilizers. When you talk about reform, why do you need reform? If it is not deformed, you don't need reform. Correct. So first is to identify why do you call it deform before you set the agenda for reform. So when you look at it as a railways, first very key sector, cannot just ignore it. If something like it's not that important, probably you could forget it. Yeah. But it's not that case. So you must make it better. And what was the challenge? Because if you really look at compare Indian railways with the rest of the world, size wise we are big, but in terms of quality, in terms of service, in terms of reach, in terms of people's expectation, we are falling far behind. And the reason... And you would admit that, that yeah, there's absolutely. a lot of work that needs to be done. Yeah, absolutely, 100%. And in fact, because of that, many things, of course. Firstly, if you go to the root cause, the railways is seen to be a uh, public utility, seen to be something which people must get out of, something out of it. At the same time, other expectation is that because it's the only ministry which prepares its own budget, you must balance the books, make profit. All the same time, you must keep upgrading yourself, so you need money for that. So all of this was just missing. Secondly, investment into several sectors. So you invest into creating more infrastructure, invest into upgrading the present infrastructure, invest into not so much money though, but your energy, invest into improving customer service, invest into safety, invest into speed, right. invest into new abilities. Now all of that, look, China is a good point that you made earlier. Is it because China is big economy that you could invest more? Or is it because they invested more, China became big economy? And that's a very fundamental that's question. That's actually a very interesting way of looking at it. Yeah. Sometimes you have to take that plunge, as China did with infrastructure. They said, we have to spend, yeah. we have to invest. Somehow, let's get the money to invest. And once we've invested, that then kickstarts other growth. And also, you know, if you really look at it, many times you've seen this. You first create infrastructure, then the growth comes in. So connectivity brings in huge economic benefit. The speed enhances your ability to actually do business better, to enhance activities which can bring in social transformation. So railways has that role to play. Now, in context of... There's a but, of course, which is there. Where's the money for this? And I'm, sure, right. I'm sure Mr. Jaitley, among question. others, is asking Very you Very good that question. question. And that was one of the reasons why we just got into this vicious cycle. No money, so no investment, no investment. Finance is bad, finance is bad, so no surplus, no surplus, no investment. So it means a vicious, vicious cycle. cycle. So we said, why not we make it virtuous? How do we make it virtuous? So what is the source of getting money? So we said we'll raise the resources of our own. First time, this is the biggest ever financial deal, is $30 billion. We signed an uh, agreement with LIC. We are already got more money coming from multilateral agencies. So money, if you don't find, you'll never do anything else. And now, if you don't find money, that's why you keep blaming somebody else, is also not a solution to the problem. So we raised this money. We are now investing. Last year, we invested about almost a lakh of crore. We want to invest this year 1,21,000 crores. In addition to this, the investment that should not necessarily go from the budget alone. That's what we have the opportunities now. We are going to have 85,000 crores of investment into dedicated freight corridor. 40,000 crores of contracts have been given for making uh, diesel and electric locomotive, state of art, which will enhance the speed, which will bring in emission reduction. But again, you'll always have those questions in a country like India where there's so many competing needs for that money. They'll say that, look, you're putting 100,000 crore rupees into Mumbai, Ahmedabad, one bullet train. Surely that money could be better spent in uplifting the entire network in other parts of the country, have better, maybe all your tracks, all your railways, everything could be improved rather than just having one bullet train. I mean, that's what the criticism is. But you know, that's a very, very unfair and I would say motivated, first one. It's politically uh, motivated or otherwise. I'll just tell you, just let us forget that part. 
why is the motivation but let's go into the merit of it firstly india needs to increase the speed yeah. now speed enhancement is a priority not just for one segment like mumbai ahmedabad our entire network we want to increase the average speed of train average speed includes all the passenger trains all the mail trains all the express trains all of that we like to increase the speed we are also starting semi high speed railway like what we started with gatiman now in fact my in budget speech we already mentioned that we want to uh, start a new train called tejas we want to turn a new train called humsafar so all of the new products will be actually in a category of semi semi high speed train but this particular project is something which was talked about much earlier before we came into the government the previous government had already decided to do a feasibility studies we take the next step forward and did it what we did we said we'll not put our money it's more or less finance entirely by the japanese it's On a 30 terms, year bond very good term 15 year monitor 0.1% you know the whole idea is that we want to make all our major state capitals connect with high speed railway over a period of time it's not just now but over a period of time but where do you make a beginning can we just think about it i will not do one project unless i do entire thing together then nothing will happen yeah. so the enemy of better will be the best we need several issues to be put in place at the same time safety will involve signaling safety will also involve training safety will also involve uh, integration of your entire tracks rolling stock and signaling together that's okay. what happens in should, case of high speed railway should be so, should be perhaps grab a seat and i'm going to want to get into the safety issue yeah. in 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 slightly greater detail yeah. please please sir yeah thank you let's just come back to the speed aspect to what you were saying together with safety that lack of speed and to some extent the lack of amenities is one of the reasons why in areas like passenger traffic you would be losing ground to the to the air, air, airlines now you can go from somewhere to somewhere in 3000 4000 rupees why spend a day day and a half in a train is the question that i'm sure people are asking but absolutely right you know in fact we should look at it competition coming from two major sectors one is from the air fare which is coming low because of the budget airlines also their connectivity is increasing and also from road because for freight for freight as well as for even for short distance passengers so what is important is if i can offer better customer service people will still like to come here secondly the speed if it is not increase they will not come so we must position railways as someone used losing high end traffic to airlines the middle level or the low end traffic to roads so unless we actually work together and have a strategy so what is what we are doing one is tejas which is absolutely high speed more than 130 kilometers so that will probably be able to work with of course we'll increase it over a period of time but to begin with with the airlines the second hum safar also with for airline and they will actually pay a little more because the amenities you provide will also bring in the passengers to you and the two more we are starting is uday which is double decker overnight train and the other one is antoya express that is actually uday will be for the mid, mid segment and antoya will be for the passengers who want to travel at any cost because they have no other choice but we'll have so different trains for different segments